argument uh, which is mode and figure of syllogism is depicted in the form of some letters and uh, figures. So if we don't know the mode and uh, figure of syllogism, obviously we won't be able to decode any categorical syllogism which is in symbolic form. <clears throat> so what is the mode of syllogism? Basically, uh, if you remember, there are two uh, major kinds of propositions, uh, universal and particular. So, uh, there are two major kinds of uh, propositions, if you uh, recall the lecture on uh, kinds of propositions. Uh, one is universal proposition, while the other one is particular proposition. And then again, in universal, uh, there are it is divided into two uh, different parts. One is universal affirmative proposition, while the other one is called universal negative proposition. Similarly, uh, in particular proposition, uh, one is called particular affirmative proposition while the other one is called particular negative proposition. Now, by the mood of syllogism, we mean basically when we try to uh, depict these kinds of propositions into letters. In formal logic, there have been uh, some letters assigned to these kinds of propositions, and which are basically the first four vowels of English uh, language. So, uh, the mood of categorical syllogism is simply a statement of a categorical proposition in which it appears. So, for example, if someone says that all men are mortal, uh, that would be the mood of this proposition would be A. It is the first letter or first, first vowel of English language, and it is depicted uh, with the letter A, the universal uh, affirmative proposition. So, all those propositions which are universal and which are in affirmative form, which are in positive form, uh, they are basically depicted with the letter A, while uh, Similarly, the universal propositions which are in negative form, those propositions are basically depicted with the letter C. E. Similarly, uh, particular proposition, if it is an affirmative proposition, uh, we depict it with the letter I, while if it is negative particular proposition, be uh, depicted with the letter O. So basically, the mode of categorical syllogism means uh, the letter through which we express these kinds of propositions. So if it is a universal affirmative, it is depicted with A. If it is a universal negative, it is depicted with C. Particular affirmative with I and particular negative with O proposition. So the mode of syllogism are basically there are four modes of syllogism A, E, I, and O. Now we move on to the uh, next slide which discusses the figure of syllogism. Now, as we said earlier, there are two major or two very important. Uh, aspects of categorical syllogism. Uh, one is mood, which we already discussed, and the other one is the figure of syllogism. Now, how to find out the figure of uh, syllogism is uh, they have assigned certain digits or uh, to be more specific, they have assigned the first four uh, digits, the first four figures of uh, number, uh, which is 1, 2, 3, 4. Since
since there are four versions of the logistic mode, we need figure for each one. Figure is determined by the position of middle term. So, as we earlier uh, discussed, that there are four, only four modes of the logism A, E, I, O. Similarly, uh, there should be four figures of, of uh, categorical syllogism as well. And the figure is determined uh, by the position of middle term. If you remember, uh, we have already discussed uh, the major term and middle term. So, if a middle term is the subject of major premise, and the predicate of minor premise that would be called figure one. I repeat, if in a categorical syllogism the middle term is the subject of major premise, that is the more general premise or the first premise, and it is a predicate of minor premise then the figure would be one. The example would be, if I say, all men are mortal, that is the major premise. Then I say, students are men, that is the minor premise. So, the middle term, which is, which always connects two premises, to the main system, two premises, in this case, is men. And I say, all men are mortal, and then I say all, all students are men. So the term men is the middle term because it makes both the premises with one another. And the figure one would have it in the middle term. The figure one would have middle term as a subject, while uh, in minor in minor premises would be a predicate. That would be the figure one. And the figure two is. Uh, that figure in which the middle term is predicate of both premises. That would be figure two. For example, if I say all men are mortal, and then I say all animals are mortal. So in this Instance, the middle term is obviously linked to the symmetry between them. That is the term mortal. So if it is in predicate of major premise and also a predicate of minor premise, then it means this, the figure of this kind of syllogism is figure two. Similarly, figure three depicts or determines. Uh, is determined by the position of middle term again. If middle term is the subject of the both premise, if, for example, if I say all men are genius, and then I say all men are brave, so in this instance, the middle term is the term men, which is used in the subject of both premise. So in this case, the figure of this kind of syllogism would be figure three. And at the end, figure four is also determined by the position of middle term again. And the middle term is the predicate of major premise and the subject of minor premise. If I say, for example, all students are intelligent. And then I say all intelligent people or all intelligent are Pakistan. That basically means that the middle term which is intelligent which is in the predicate of major form premise and in the subject of minor form. This kind of uh, syllogism would be determined 
as the figure four of syllogism. So there are four modes of syllogism and similarly four figures of syllogism. So when we are uh, trying to depict, when we are trying to show our uh, syllogism in symbolic form, we just use the letter for the as a mode of syllogism. We use the letter for the proposition and the figure uh, of which will determine the position of middle term that is uh, depicted in terms of a number that is one, two, three, four, and one of these. So this is basically the mode and figure of syllogism. So let's uh, try to understand it in terms of uh, the primitive for example, uh, the letters at the beginning of the proposition, they are basically the mood of proposition. So if the first unit says that all primates are mammals, this is a universal affirmative proposition, which, as we discussed earlier, is depicted with the letter A. The second thing is says all human beings are fine. Again, this is a universal affirmative proposition, which is depicted in terms of letter A. And the conclusion says that for all human beings are mammals. That again is a universal affirmative premise, which is depicted by the uh, letter A. So the mood of this syllogism would be triple A. Because all of the propositions in this uh, categorical syllogism are universal affirmative. Therefore, uh, the symbolic form of this syllogism would be triple A. Now, <clears throat> we can uh, basically determine the mood of these propositions. With the letters. Now uh, let's try to uh, understand the figure of syllogism uh, in symbolic form. So, as I said earlier, that the figure of a syllogism is determined by the position of middle term in the syllogism. So, the figure one says that if I say, for example, all planets are mammals or all M, C, that M is basically the letter used for the middle term, generally speaking, in this uh, symbolic form. So the figure one would say all primates are memory, and the minor premise says all human beings are primates, and the conclusion says therefore all human beings are memory. So this is figure one. Now, this can be depicted in terms of a symbolic form, which is the mood of this uh, figure is triple A. The mood of this syllogism uh, is triple A, while the figure is number one. So, the form of this symbolic, so the form or the symbolic form of this categorical syllogism would be triple A. The second uh, figure, or the figure two, is again determined with the letter, with, with the position of middle term, and the middle term is depicted by the letter M in symbolic categorical uh, So if I say all the M of all mammals are final, the second premise, or the minor premise, says that all human beings are primal, and the conclusion says that therefore all human beings are mammals. So, in this case, the term primal is the middle term which is used in the predicate of both premises, hence, making 
for determining the figure of this kind of syllogism as figure 2. So the form of this categorical syllogism will be triple A2. Now figure 3 basically again determined uh, by middle, middle term, position of middle term. So if I say all primates are mammals, then I say all primates are human beings. Therefore, all human beings are mammals. So, the middle term in this syllogism is used as a subset of both primitives. That basically determines the figure of the categorical syllogism as figure 3. So, the form of this categorical syllogism is triple A3. The fourth form again determined by the position of middle term, and as we discussed earlier, that the predicate of the major premise, if it is a middle term, and the subject of the minor premise is a middle term, which is depicted with letter M normally, that makes the form or the figure of this kind of syllogism figure 4. So, this categorical syllogism will be presented symbolically as triple A4. Now, <clears throat> let me give you some uh, examples. The mood of universal negative proposition is E, while the mood of universal affirmative proposition or A. So in this categorical syllogism, it says no members are finite. The second semester is all kinds of human beings. Uh, the conclusion says all human beings are members. The form of this categorical syllogism would be E A A 4. If you look closely uh, and if you just try to remember when we were discussing the definition of the major and minor primates, the major primate is the one which is more general, and that is the first primate in this case, while the minor primate is less general, that is the second primate. So the major primate or the major term in the first image is mammal, while the middle term is primal. The minor term of this categorical syllogism is human being, and the middle term is the primal. So, if you see, these are specifically, this is the figure 4, because the figure 4 is uh, determined by the position of the middle term. In this case, it is the predicate of major premise and the subject of minor premise. Another form, uh, another example of form of categorical syllogism could be universal negative propositions are affected by letter E if there is no members of finite. The particular affirmative proposition or depicted with letter I, in this case say some primates are human beings. And then again the conclusion is universal universal affirmative which is depicted with the letter A. So the position of middle term in this categorical syllogism is a major premise, the middle term is a predicate, while a minor premise, the middle term is the subject. So that means the figure of this categorical syllogism is 4. So the form of this categorical syllogism is E I A 4. 
Another example of the form of categorical syllogism is the first premise, which is a major premise, that says some kinds of numbers. So it is depicted with letter I. The minor premise says some human beings are kind. Again, it is depicted with letter I. And the conclusion says some human beings are not many. This is particular negative proposition, which is depicted by the letter O. So, uh, the position of middle term in this categorical syllogism, uh, the first, the major premise uh, has got it as subject, while the minor premise has got the middle term as predicate. That means the figure of this categorical syllogism is one. So, the form of this categorical syllogism is two. I, I, O, 1. So these were the forms of categorical, different forms of categorical syllogism and uh, how to determine mood and figure of categorical syllogism. I hope uh, you got this question uh, meaningfully and if you did not understand anything or if you have got any comments or queries or questions, Please do let us know uh, so that we can discuss this uh, in, in, in our next lecture before starting a new topic. Uh, till then, I would say uh, take care and uh, stop uh, You can consult the uh, reference book if you want to so, uh, study it further. Thank you very much and Allah Hafiz.